In the last video I showed this horribly flickery lamp. I mean, seriously, the iPad makes things flicker, but this is the, the slightest movement I can see this of movement, the, the strobing filaments. It's a horrible lamp. It really is very stroby. It's just not what you want. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to open it up. And unlike the um, ones with the Edison screw base, it's quite hard to... With the Edison screw base, I can get my snips and I can just sort of nip my way in just by going onto the thread, but this uh, Bayonet cat base doesn't uh, really have a facility to get the snips onto something, so I'm going to use the Dremel. So, warning for noise. Right, let's see if I can get the screwdriver into that now. I'm not sure I've been cutting into the just the sort of black glass type stuff that they have in the base. I think I have been. As long as I can get the snips into that, I can start peeling it away. Oh, that's better. Using the snips for their intended purpose, not really. Once I get a, a wee hold on that metal, it'll peel away. It's looking pretty good. Scrunching noises. Holding a glass globe, so nothing could possibly go wrong here, could it? Ooh, that is uh the black is right up quite deep, this sort of like insulating cement. There's not a lot of room in the base here at all, is there? That's probably why it's flickery, because there's very little circuitry. Okay, I'm seeing the uh, hint of the circuitry now. I'm seeing a tiny little circuit board. Let's see if I can get the snips in here. Good start. So what's this going to be? Is it going to be a tiny little capacitive dropper? Is it going to be a resistor? Is it going to be one of those little chips that uh, regulates the current? Uh, by just changing its resistance, its internal sort of, well, acts like a variable resistor, but a semiconductor one. I'll just get this metal out of the way first here. Hmm, smooth. Right, let's see what we've got. Snips again, and I'll cut this uh, heat shrink off. Oh, I'm seeing what looks like a little capacitor. I think this may be a super minimalist capacitive dropper circuit using one of those little surface mount ceramic capacitors, the look of it. So is it going to be the capacitor, a resistor and a rectifier? If it is, I think we may have opened a very similar one before. This, this heat shrink is just not parting. There we go. Oh, so we get the capacitor with a discharge resistor on, well, uh, yes, it is a discharge resistor on one side, and on the other side we got a bridge rectifier and no series resistor at all that I can see. Oh, that is so scarily minimalist. The pulse current through those LEDs must be quite dramatic. Am I missing something? No, there must be a... Hold on. Oh, there is a little resistor. Or is that? That's a, well, that's a load resistor. That's a 204, so that's 200k. Okay, I shall draw the schematic for this out right now. And the other one is 304. Uh, it's across the dropper capacitor, so it's 300k. Right, uh, where's the notepad? Where is the notepad? There's a notepad. That's quite hideous. It's a bit too minimalist. So what it is, is it's the mains come in, AC in. It's going straight through a capacitor with a discharge resistor across it. The value of the capacitor, I should be able to get a rough indication of the value of the capacitor with this. I'm going to guess 
I'm going to put two two microfarad setting um, and stick it across that, and we'll see what it shows. Three hundred thirty nano. So it's a three hundred thirty nano. Goodness knows what voltage. So question mark voltage. The resistor across that was three hundred k. Three hundred k. And then that was going through a full bridge rectifier. AC in. AC in. Mains going straight there. The output, uh, it's got a little resistor load across it, uh, 200k was that, was that 200k? I think it was. Um, and then, basically, going through all the LEDs. That's going to potentially put quite a, depending on where it turns on the sine wave, that's going to put quite a zap through those LEDs. It's not a, a great idea. Normally I would expect to see, when there's no smoothing capacitor, I'd expect to see a resistor either here or here to actually limit, limit the inrush current, but I don't see that here. It's just absolutely minimalist, and I'm pretty sure I have seen this tiny little circuit board used before. It's, so that explains why it's quite so flickery. It is just running, well, because it's 50 hertz supply, it's running at 100 hertz flicker. And because the combined forward voltage of the LEDs is relatively high, if this is the sine wave, it'll probably be coming on, let's see, probably coming on about here. Staying on till about there, so yeah. It's going to be off, There's going to be, it's going to be dark in these bits and lit in those bits, so it's pretty much near enough of 50-50 on-off strobings. That, that's unpleasant. But there you go, that's what's inside these cheapy ones. This one unfortunately came from Del Hanway, who supplied the really good one I took apart yesterday that looked like this. So yeah, this is a bit too minimalist, that's going too far this, but um, it works, but it is just far too flickery.